Welcome to the MetaWare Debugger Training. This is MDB Session 1, where we'll cover how to start and configure the debugger. We'll start off by showing you how to start the debugger using a couple of different techniques. Then we'll show you how to configure the debugger for a number of different targets. There are two options for starting the MDB debugger. The first option is to invoke it from the Start menu. When you install the MetaWare Toolkit, a new entry is added under Synopsys Inc. as shown on the screen. Click on the MDB icon to launch the debugger. The second option is to invoke the MDB executable directly from a command prompt. This option is typically used when you are running MDB from a batch script. We'll discuss this further in a few minutes. Now that the MDB debugger has started, let's configure the debugging session. Press the Debugger Options button to open the Configuration dialog. Although there are many options that can be set, in this short video I'll only show you the most commonly used ones needed to get up and running. Click on Program Options. The first step is to select the ELF file that you want to debug. This usually has an ELF or .out extension and is the file produced by the MetaWare linker. The debugger will automatically run your program to main by default. If you want to instead stop at the program entry point, or if your program doesn't have a main, then you should uncheck this option here. If your program is already loaded onto the target, in ROM for example, then check this third option to suppress the download. Click on Target Selection. This page allows you to choose what target you want to use to debug your program. It can either be a simulator or real hardware. Select Hardware if you are connecting over JTAG to an ASIC or FPGA based target. The debugger supports probes from both Ashling and Digilent. Depending on which you select, you will have additional options that need to be configured for each host. You can also debug using a simulator target. NSIM is an instruction set simulator used mainly with the ARC v2 based targets like EM and HS. Select your target processor family and then optionally enable JIT Turbo mode if you have licensed NSIM Pro. If you have a cycle accurate XCAM model of your core, or if you want to connect to an RTL simulation of an ARC core, Choose the XCAM or RTL simulation option. Here you should browse for the rascal.env file that is associated with your model. Note that you may have to edit this file to specify an absolute path to the model's executable, depending on where you invoke the debugger from. If you are using the NSIM simulator, you need to tell the simulator about the properties of the arc that you want to model. This is not required in the case of real hardware or the XCAM RTL simulation, since the debugger can query the target for this information, but it is very important when using NSIM. You should select the extensions from the Simulator Extensions menu that you'd like to use when modeling your core. For example, if we look at Instruction Extensions, you can see that there are a number of options related to the standard hardware extensions available in the ARCs. You can also select options from the DSP sections and various other options throughout. Please note that the debugger supports the concept of TCF files, which are used to define the ARC specific configuration and share it between the various ARC software tools, including the compiler and debugger. The easiest way to configure all of these options is to simply supply the name of the TCF file on the command line when you invoke the debugger. If you have licensed NSIM Pro and are using an ARC EM core, you can enable cycle estimation by clicking on the Enable Estimated Instruction Cycle Counting here. Finally, you can click on Command Line Options to supply any debugger options which aren't available elsewhere in the GUI. This is usually only required for advanced usage.
Note that the command line equivalents of all debugger options that you set in the GUI are summarized at the bottom of the screen. This can be useful if you plan to invoke the debugger from a script or a batch file and don't want to configure the session using the GUI each time. Once you're satisfied with all the options you've chosen, press the OK button to save them. Press OK again to start the debugging session. Tutorials on using the debugger are covered in a separate training session. Here are some other tips that can be helpful when using MDB. GUI configuration options are saved in the current working directory in a subdirectory called .sc.project. Settings will be remembered if you launch the debugger again from the same directory. However, moving to a new working directory will require you to reconfigure the options. For this reason, it can be helpful to create a script that you use to launch the debugger. This will be self-contained with a list of configuration options, so it's easily portable to different directories and computers. Note that you can get the initial list of options to use from the GUI configuration window and then copy them into your script. Debugger projects also allow you to set up and manage multiple configurations directly from the GUI as an alternative to using scripts. If you want to use a TCF file to configure your NSIM debug session, you should launch MDB from the command line and include the TCF option. The debugger startup and configuration techniques discussed in this presentation are covered in detail in the DesignWare Metaware Debugger User's Guide for ARC, supplied with the Metaware toolset. In particular, please see section 2.1, starting the debugger, and section 2.2, starting your debug session.